This is it. It's polygon time. Something you've all been asking for for a very, very, very long time. And then, as usual, let's jump in. This channel's about math, money, and freedom. And today we're going to look at my observations. A lot of ground to cover, so I'm not going to waste any time. And a quick disclaimer, of course, this is edutainment. This is not financial advice, so please do your own research. So first of all, we're going to go through our 10-step process as usual. And this will cover things like what it does, how it plays, industry disruption, value props, the technology and the developers, tokenomics, ecosystem, growth and longevity, risks, most important, and finally, the piece you all love, price predictions. So here we go. Uh, first of all, what it does, Matic is designed to help scale Ethereum, improve usability, and reduce transaction fees while not compromising on anything decentralization. The other thing is it utilizes the proof of stake sidechains to scale Ethereum horizontally, and it has a theoretical capacity of millions of transactions per second by building out more sidechains. And Polygon is designed to be Ethereum's internet of blockchains. It's written right on their website up front. But let's uh, talk about the founders themselves and the background. Uh, there are three co-founders, Janiti Kanami, Anurag Arjun, and Sandeep Nairwal. And these are three very clever folks. Uh, they have a lot of experience with Ethereum. And their plan was to implement a concept that came about from Vitalik Buterin. It's basically what he calls Plasma. That's what these guys have built. So the launch pad uh, hit Binance, Project IEO in 2019. The company was founded in 2017. The main launch was in 2020. And they rebranded to Polygon only recently, a few months ago in Feb 2021. And the vision is to become a one-stop shop for all things Ethereum. So a bit of a lofty goal. And many of you may ask later, what exactly is the relationship between Polygon and Ethereum? But we'll get to that as well. So first of all, how it plays, it's important to understand exactly the difference between layer one, layer two, layer three, et cetera, et cetera. So think of layer one solutions like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Algorand. These are the platforms that store all of the key data. And layer two are solutions like Polygon. And that's where they play, but they feed off of layer one. So. The question that people have is, if it is a layer two solution that does everything in EIP 1559, what use is Ethereum anymore? In other words, is Polygon Ethereum 2.0? And that's the big question. No, it's not, and it never will be. There'll always be a need for the layer one protocol that is Ethereum as the original store of record. And second of all, the future that we're going down is what they call the interchain world. And that's absolutely critical. Thing. So how it plays. First of all, it seeks to scale Ethereum horizontally through layer two sidechains. We've covered that. Now the problem typically with Ethereum has been the bloat caused by each node having to keep the entire history of the blockchain on it. And that makes it very slow. So what they've done is they've created sidechain solutions that take snapshots of the primary layer at periodic checkpoints. And that gives them a proof of stake consensus. The validators are rewarded for publishing their summaries, etc. The easy way to think about it is think of Ethereum like the Supreme Court that adjudicates only special cases, high level cases. But think of Polygon like the lower courts that resolve all other issues. And that's probably the easiest way to think about how these guys actually operate. So uh, in terms of scorecard ranking, where do they rank? In terms of layer two scaling solution space, these guys are the top. They are the 800 pound gorilla. You can see they're ranked number 15. The next player in their same field is ranked number 87 from the OMG network. And uh, a few people have asked me to look into those guys, but they're a little bit too small for my liking right now. And there's other names that I never really heard of. So these guys are out on their own and they are the clear leader in the space with a market cap of about 11 billion. We'll talk more about market caps later as well. So benchmark ranking, another key thing to look at is not only do they offer Ethereum compatibility, scalability, and security, but they do other things too that other folks don't do. They've got a far superior developer experience, user experience, uh, their interoperability is considered the best out there as well. So you can see here that what they do is primo so far. So let's talk about industry disruption. And one of the things I'm very, very interested in, that's why I'm fascinated by things like DeFi. So the Matic network has been the scaling choice for many names like Chainlink, who I'm a big fan of, MakerDAO, ThorChain. A lot of people asked me to look at ThorChain and that is on the list and we'll be tackling that in a week or so. 
Decentraland, OpenSea, and more. Now, Polygon powers the dApps in multiple industries, including DEXs, decentralized exchanges, decentralized gaming, which is a growing area, NFTs, and prediction markets. And the whole area is that they're moving into is what's called IaaS, or Infrastructure as a Service type solutions, which is going to be big going forward in the future as well, especially as the whole DeFi revolution happens. So what value propositions do these guys have? So obviously horizontal scaling to millions of transactions per second is huge. Block times under two seconds, also very big. And they allow for multiple payment channels for micropayments. Think about what Cardano wants to do in Africa. These guys actually, the combination of this with Ethereum can actually do the same thing. Now their rebrand was a whole pivot towards offering infrastructure as a service, hence the name change. And they've got a whole bunch of other things, but really at the end of the day, what you need to know is they solve the high Ethereum fees that exist today. Hence the picture of the actual cost of some of these fees, you know, from rapid fees can cost up to $86 a transaction all the way down to slow, $67, $68 a transaction is some recent numbers I pulled. So that is the kind of crux of their value proposition. Now, in terms of technology and developers, this is one of the kind of maybe a tiny risk for Polygon. They feel they maybe don't have enough developers or have problems attracting more developers, but many other blockchains have the same type of situation. But despite all that, Polygon do have over 90 dApps built on including DEXs, gaming and NFTs. And the proof of stake consensus has over $200 million worth of Matic staked. And for staking Matic, you get at least 4% up to a much higher percentage over time. Now, the most important thing to look at is tokenomics. So the token demand obviously is driven by two areas. One, users require Matic to pay transaction fees to the validators to use the service layers. And the validators require Matic to stake in order to receive block rewards. So pretty pretty much like many many other platforms out there and of course we mentioned matic is proof of stake but it also has a fixed supply which we'll talk a lot about and unlike most proof of stake protocols matic does not pay stakers using token inflation the rewards come from network fees and the pool of tokens allocated to them so that's an important issue that we're going to dig into as well now looking at the breakdown of how the tokens are distributed there is a 10 billion token fixed supply with already 6.2 billion in circulation and about 45% of tokens are held by the foundation team, advisors and some seed investors. Now the early tokens have a three year vesting schedule and they unlock every six months and that's extremely important to know because all of the supply will be exhausted by August 2022. That's when the pool will run out and this big supply of tokens of 1 billion entering circulation every six months due to vesting unlocks could have an impact on price. And we'll talk more about that later in the pricing models and how I take that into account. And it's also uncertain, and we'll talk more about this in risks as well, if the Matic network can rely exclusively on transaction fees to incentivize the validators. So a couple of little issues there that we'll talk about. So tokenomics, a quick visual of what we're talking about. This is the path to issuing all of the tokens, the 10 billion. And again, you see there by August, 2022, the whole supply should be exhausted. And that is part of a potential problem in the future as well. So let's look at the ecosystem. Uh, they have an incredible ecosystem considering it was built in such a short window of time. But the key players I'd like to mention as well are partners there like MakerDAO, Chainlink, SushiSwap, The Graph, Aave, Atari. And what is really interesting is they just partnered up with Google. And if you're familiar with uh, GCP, the Google Cloud Platform, they have a platform called BigQuery and that helps analyze all of the, of the transactions on the actual blockchain. This is also listed in the Google Cloud Marketplace under financial services as a category. Think DeFi, which is great that they're categorized like that. And uh, it has insights on the 6 million plus daily transactions on the blockchain, which is kind of staggering. That's why you need this big super machine to analyze all of the stuff. But having Google as a partner is very powerful. Now, in terms of longevity and track record, Matic has his roots as we mentioned in his Plasma vision. So you can see here the Plasma checkpoint nodes that have part of the blockchain data, it means they can scale horizontally. Their whole vision was to improve the Ethereum infrastructure since 2017. 
2019, Matic was selected to be launched in Binance Launchpad. 2021, they were rebranded as Polygon, as we covered, listed on Coinbase also in 2021. And they've hosted between 200 and 300 hackathons in India over the last one or two years, which is very, 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 very busy. So growth opportunities, let's talk about where they can grow going forward. So it is a one-stop shop for developers to integrate with Ethereum. And it's pivoting to become that IaaS, the infrastructure as a service like Polkadot and Cosmos. And also what's really interesting is Mark Cuban came out and said openly, he believes in the exponential growth of Polygon and he has invested in the project. And this really helps bring a lot of credibility and visibility to the platform. Not only also being listed on Coinbase, which boosted their price a few months ago as well. Now let's talk about the risks real quick. Obviously, reliance on the growth of Ethereum is double-edged. They've kind of hitched their wagon to all things Ethereum. And uh, it's going to be hard, although they're going to try to position themselves as an agnostic blockchain, but they're not at this stage. So competition as well. A lot of people believe that once EIP-1559 is fully baked and launched, this could compete with Polygon. But I have my own take on that as well. And finally, as a proof of stake protocol, it must be able to attract validators. And once the staking rewards runs out, that might become a problem. The question is, can people survive on transaction fees alone? So we'll see uh, where that all goes. So back to price predictions, the most important thing. A couple of things I just want to talk about is back in November, Polygon was one cent. And now it's $1.80. So it's absolutely been on a tear since November last year. Even uh, in April, it was at 30 cents. And it's gone up 100 times since the 1st of January. Now, when you look at the Fibonacci retracement levels, which is kind of interesting, they show some historical layers of support. Key layers are around the 80 cent mark and around the $1.50 mark. So if you are looking for an entry or position, Think carefully about those layers as well, because it seems to bounce off them like clockwork. And the other thing that's important to note is with the extra supply hitting the market every six months, not too sure exactly how that's impacting the price right now, but you can assume it will. And I'm sure the founders, etc., are letting it out onto the market slowly but surely. Now, in terms of price prediction, I've got a couple of different models here. I pulled in price predictions from six different analysts, and they range from $5 prediction at the end of 2021 to $30 in 2032. But some don't seem to take into account the supply glut in 2021 and 2022. Um, but looking at this, uh, one of them was extremely aggressive. I think it was uh, Capital.com had some very, no, it was, uh, sorry, Gov Capital had some very aggressive price predictions going up to $42 in 2026. Others kind of seem more or less in line, more conservative. But, you know, so much is changing in this whole space. And most of these price predictions are very recent over the last couple of weeks. And you can see that they do follow more or less a trend. But what is kind of more interesting is what I did to predict price for Polygon. So my thesis is, I believe... Polygon could easily achieve a 5% Ethereum market cap. Currently today, it's 3% or 3.6%. So going from 3% of Ethereum's market cap to 5% is not that difficult. Now, what I also did is I've got detailed price prediction models for Ethereum, and I tied that back to Ethereum market cap based on price, based on the Ethereum supply, which will become deflationary, and I took into account the Polygon supply, of about averaging about 6.2 billion in 2021, but 8.2 billion in 2022, up to a full exhaustion in 2022, August. So just assuming an average of 8.2 billion for the year. And then of course, a max supply of 10 billion every year from then on out. And then I tied it back by calculating the price based on these models and the extra supply of tokens on the market, especially in the year 2021 and 2022. And my price predictions from the low end range from $3.61 at the end of 2021 to about $5 in 2025, up to $14 in 2030. Again, that's my low, super conservative prediction. My expected scenario, again, about $3.68 at the end of 2021, 
about six dollars in 2025 and twenty dollars by the year end 2030 so this is basically more than a 12x from where we are now and the high end depending on exactly how this whole DeFi revolution takes a hold and how quickly it grows polygon 380 the end of 2021 up to about seven dollars and fifty cents in the year 2025 all the way up to $32 in the year 2030. Now, what's interesting about this is this was very much in line with the coin prediction forecast. So we weren't too far off, although my prices accelerated slower over time, but the 2030 price is more or less in line based on my average prediction, average to more aggressive prediction, which I thought was interesting. So let's jump and talk about the conclusions real quick. And wrap this up. So first of all, DeFi disruption. Many believe it could take place. So the World Economic Forum said blockchain could disrupt 867 trillion in traditional markets. And these markets, just equity markets, 95 trillion debt markets, 106 trillion securitized products, 10 trillion derivatives, 560 trillion securities, 4 trillion and asset management, about 90 trillion. And that doesn't even include insurance, which could also be disrupted by this whole space. Now, in terms of the second conclusion, first of all, Polygon has an immediate use case of scaling Ethereum network, but the question is, will it be threatened by EIP-1559? And Polygon's core value is its technology allowing horizontal scaling on Ethereum and providing that infrastructure as a service solution as well. It is a strong ecosystem, multiple dApps, partnerships, including Google, and many, many projects using its service, which is powerful unto itself. But its main challenge is really finding its role for itself as Ethereum rolls out its own native solutions, basically competing directly with Polygon. Final conclusion, part three. There is a fixed supply, which I really like. It's a clear leader. It's widely adopted as many use cases and the key element for a new interchain world. And the world will be open. It'll be integrated and everything will be compatible with each other. So a quick note on market caps as well. If DeFi does go to where I think it's gonna go, uh, and based on my high-end assumption in the year 2030, that means Matic would have half of the market cap of Tesla today. Just to put things in perspective, a little over $300 billion is Tesla's market cap, and that is the 10-year forecast for what Matic could potentially be, again, assuming this whole DeFi revolution happens. So conclusion part four, it's a thumbs up. It's a very, very interesting project and has so many very powerful facets despite the potential threat of EIP 1559, which I don't think is a threat at all. Okay, big thank you. Also, there is an angle that I like about this project is even if EIP 1559 doesn't succeed, Polygon still helps Ethereum be a success. So thank you everybody. Hope you like this content. Thanks everybody on Patreon as well. And hit the like and subscribe. Take care. Bye.